Hello, welcome to the video. In this video, I interview Michelle Covey, who is the Vice President of Commerce at GS1 US. And in this video, she not only clarifies some common misconceptions about purchasing your UPC codes, but she also answers some common questions and doubts that a lot of sellers have. And most importantly, she shares with us an update directly from GS1 US that will not only help us save money, but will also protect our business and our brand and give us peace of mind knowing that we indeed have authentic barcodes because as you probably know Amazon and other e-commerce platforms they verify that your number the UPC code that you've purchased that that number is indeed in the GS1 database so this is extremely important so be sure to watch to the end and if you do like the video do not forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you you never miss any of our future videos and you're always notified and without further ado let's get to the interview welcome Michelle thank you so much for joining us here and I've already introduced you a little bit in the intro but why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and um, then we can move on to the exciting news that we have today Sounds good. Thank you for having me. I really am happy to be here. Um, I'm Michelle Covey. I work um, at GS1 US, and uh, my role primarily is to um, help, uh, one, bring um, education and awareness out to our member community about um, GS1 standards, um, identifiers, things that we're going to talk about today, like G10. Um, but I also bring um, products and services to life that help enable standards for our member community, primarily. Awesome. And okay, so let's jump right into what are GTINs? All right. So GTINs stand for Global Trade Item Number. Um, and GTINs really are the um, unique identifier, the, the string of numbers that are associated to a, a, a each individual unique product. Um, sometimes these GTINs can be referred to, um, they have many different names. Um, some people call them UPCs, some people call them EANs, some people call them barcodes, um, essentially, uh, and they're all used interchangeably. Each one does have a different true meaning, um, but a lot of people don't, you know, just use the same, just use them interchangeably. Just to unpack it real quick, a UPC is a 12-digit G10, um, and so, um, and a UPC barcode is that 12 digits actually encoded into that um, barcode so that it could be um, read by a, a machine at like point of sale. Um, an EAN is a 13-digit G10, and those are traditionally issued out of Europe, um, other areas of the, um, the globe, um, whereas UPCs um, tend to be issued out of U.S. So G10, UPC, EAN, barcode, all kind of interchangeable, but that G10 is the unique number string um, that um, helps you uniquely identify your product. Hopefully that unpacks yes. it a little bit. For example, if you go to a store and they um, scan, you, I don't know, your toothpaste, you the machine needs to read that that is the toothpaste and it's the whitening toothpaste, it's not another one. So in order for it to have it unique to that product, for machines to read it and for databases as well, then it makes sense that every single product needs to have that identification so we can actually know, get the correct product to the consumer. So that makes exactly. sense. And um, so you work for GS1 US. And um, I, I just want to ask first, is GS1 the only place that you can get authentic um, GTINs? And then we can jump into the update that you have to tell us, uh, which is specifically from GS1 US, I believe. So let me uh, just give you a little overview of GS1, and then I'll answer your question about, you know, is GS1 the only authentic place? So GS1 US, like you, like um, I mentioned, I work for GS1 US. We are part of a larger um, global organization. So GS1 um, has many different um, regional offices that help um, provide guidance, um, industry standards, um, G10s, and or, you know, identifiers to their local market. So um, we are governed by our GS1 global office which is in Brussels, um, but each regional office has their own, um, you know, independent business. So GS1 US compared to GS1 Canada, GS1 UK, GS1 Brazil, GS1 Australia, each, um, each different region will have its own GS1 office. We're all independent of each other. However, we're all part of this, what we call like a federated model. 
we all help um, provide that education and training to um, our regions about GS1 standards and provide, um, you know, the identification needs for um, our region. Um, so going back to um, answering, you know, is GS1 the only place? Um, if you need a, um, a G10 or a, um, a product identifier um, to um, identify your product, GS1 is the only source for the true GS1 issued G10. Um, we do not have any um, agreements with other third parties to reissue our um, identifiers. So you may find that those identifiers are in um, other market offerings. Um, just know that those are not um, valid GS1 um, agreements. So GS1 um, is the only source for G10. Okay. So even when those third party uh, websites or companies, they say they have GS1 barcodes, they're not, I mean, officially affiliated with you. I, we don't know how they get them or whatever. We can't really comment on that. But a lot of people, a lot of Amazon sellers, especially when they're starting out, they do tend to go to those third party sellers and they believe their statements that it is, um, GS1, GS1 barcodes. And a lot of people may know that, I mean, we here on the channel, we, um, we talked about selling on Amazon, selling on Walmart and Etsy and other marketplaces. If you only sell on Amazon, you do have the option to apply for the G10 exemption. And we already have a video here on the channel about that. However, if you do want to expand to other marketplaces or if you want to have, um, uh, have that associate, like you want more brand equity as, um, brand equity associated having that identifier to your products that does give you value to your company and to your products more official, let's say. And, um, so it, because of that, and Amazon does have a, a recommendation of, um, getting barcodes only from GS1 and they do verify all of the barcodes when you create a new listing. So we're going to touch on that a little, in a, a little bit later, but because of that, you should be getting your barcodes with the GS1 website. And that's why this new update is so exciting. And why don't you share that with us? Sure. And Ali, I completely agree with you. A lot of people think they're going to take the easy way out and get uh, apply for a G10 exemption. But then their product gets um, very popular and they want to start selling their product on other um, in other channels. Um, and then they're going to be requested to get that G10 identifier. So yes. it's easier and better just to start off getting that G10. Um, so yes, so GS1 um, US has traditionally offered um, what we've called capacity-based G10s over um, for many years, um, and that's where um, manufacturers, sellers could come to us and they'd get a pack of G10s. So it's starting with the GS1 company prefix that then allows those um, members to um, enumerate G10s. So it starts at 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, up to 100,000. And we really felt like when we expanded to the 10 capacity, we were um, addressing that small business need. But we found, especially in the last several years, um, that even the 10 capacity wasn't really, was still too much for our, those small and micro businesses, or even for businesses that just wanted to test a couple of products to see if they wanted to launch into um, selling online. And so we listened to our members and we, um, last November, um, we rolled out the single GS1 US G10 offering. So this is an opportunity for those small micro businesses or even just somebody who wants to start off um, testing the water to come to GS1 US, license a single GS1 G10, and um, it, the, it's only $30. Um, there are no annual renewal fees, um, which also we found, you know, that was another sticking point for a lot of small yes. people. You know, why do I have to keep paying for it? So we felt each year, you know, why do I have to do the annual renewal fees? So we just felt like this was um, a good opportunity to help those small businesses, you know, get product identification on their products, do it the right way so that they can also have those G10 shared into the database we'll talk about later for where that um, companies use for verification. Awesome. That's so, so exciting. And being completely honest, that was our view when we started on selling on Amazon, we just wanted to try. We had no idea if our product was going to just work or not. We didn't want to buy an expensive pack. 
or be committed to having to renew it. So um, we did consider the benefits of going to a third-party seller. So I do think this is going to be huge for everyone who's just starting, not only on Amazon, but all other marketplaces as well. Because it, when you start right, it makes it everything easier later on. Even because you want, I mean, a lot of people are, are afraid of just, oh, I don't really want to get an EIN or this or a, a very official barcode or anything of that because they just want to test it. But if you make it easier for something like this, since the beginning, they're, they're, when the business their business grow, it's going to be a lot better, a lot less headaches as well, as you said. So are you able to show us how someone could go ahead and purchase a single G10 from Just One US? Sure. Yes. Um, so it's a very simple e-commerce transaction. So most of us are very familiar with shopping online, <laughs> especially in the pandemic. So um, I'm going to walk through that step real quick. Um, hopefully you can see my screen right now. Yes. All right. So um, I'm on the GS1 US homepage. So you'll see up here it's gs1us.org. And from the homepage, right here at the top, because most people um, come to our website to actually license um, a G10 or, or get that capacity-based G10. So right up here at the front, get your G10s, how to get started. So click on that button. It'll take you to a screen. Now, a couple of things to think about when you look at what you need for identifiers. Um, we have this barcode estimator. So some companies think, oh, I only have one product. I only need one G10. And I'll say a backpack. Um, well, what if you offer that backpack in three colors? And what if you have that backpack in two sizes? So you actually have six products. So you need to think about the variation that you have of your product um, because each unique variation needs to have its own identifier. Yes, very, common, very common question that we get all the time. Seems confusing, yeah. but it's really straightforward. If someone wants to buy a star size medium, purple shirt how how is amazon going to know is going to be medium purple shirt and it's not medium pink shirt it needs to have a unique identifier so that makes sense exactly and also if you're selling your product in an each versus a case so and i have a, my own example especially on amazon um, i wanted to order two cans of coffee and instead i got two cases of coffee so somebody didn't identify that case individually from that can so um, I'm sorry if that was your <laughs> Somebody else did not. <laughs> so just be careful um, and, and think about the different variations that you have with your products. Below that, we have, once you identify how many um, G10s you need, then we have either the single G10 offering or we have that capacity base. And this has been our traditional um, offering for many years. People are um, used to, you get the pack, then you could, which is your GS1 company prefix, and then you could enumerate. There are some other benefits to the prefix um, that I'm not going to go into because that's a whole nother lesson. Um, but that prefix can help you also build other identifiers for supply chain business processes, such as um, shipping code containers, um, you know, other types of um, product identifiers. But if you want to just start off simply and just list your products on Amazon with a G10, the single G10 is a great way to get started. So the process is really easy. Again, it's an e-commerce transaction. Everything's done online. Um, we walk you through as best as we can. So the first screen is really about getting that information that you're going to use on your product. And we ask for two field names, brand name and product description. And there's help little, little help bubbles here um, that give you some guidance too. The one thing about brand name I want to um, comment is some people don't know, like, is this my company name or is this my brand name? So think about... Um, what is the brand name on your actual product? So it may be my company is Michelle's Cookies LLC, but my actual brand, and you guys are going to now watch me type, is Michelle's Crunchy Cookies. So that's my brand name. That's what you're going to see on my product. You're not going to see Michelle's Company LLC. The product description, we also give you some guidance, but the, the key things are, you know, four elements that help you identify you, that unique product. So this is also where some variations, you know, you could identify the differences between variations. So we say put in your brand name again. I know um, it, it seems kind of redundant, but this is um, just the product description. So I'll put my, I should do a, a shorter ex description or this um, example. Um, I'm going to say these are chocolate chip cookies 
and I'm going to say it's a four pack of cookies, and that might be eight ounces. So you've got your description, um, what it is, what the, you know, the quantity, and then um, net content. And then you add it to your cart. Now, um, once you add it to your cart, and I, your screen's up here, so I'm going to put that down there. Um, you'll see a, um, you'll, you'll get an actual subscription to the Data Hub tool. This is for free, but what we do is we offer all GS1 US members and a subscription to Data Hub. And Data Hub is really a tool that allows you to manage your GTINs and your product information, assign additional product attributes to it. Um, this is also the database that we use to share that um, product information out to um, retailers, marketplaces, uh, solution providers, app providers that do the verification. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is that data hub tool is really where that is. So you can actually license multiple single GTINs. So um, you could license, um, uh, you know, continue if you want to um, add another GTIN, add another GTIN, and continue to add them to your cart. Um, once you are done, then you go through the checkout process. We do say that um, at about nine, when you say here, when you need more than nine G10, you may want to look at that prefix. So just, okay. you know. But there's, there's no, no limit. There's no limit. There's no limit. limit. But, you know, then the cost different. And you might as well get the, the prefix. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper. So, um, but it's up to you, your business choice. Um, so once you've, um, you know, enter as many GTINs as you want, then you go through the checkout process. And this is where, again, most people are going to be familiar with this. If you've ever shopped online, either you sign in if you've been to GS1 before and have a, an account, or you can continue as a new guest. And um, the, these are just core basic information um, elements that you would get. Um, your company name, company phone number, address, contact information. Once you fill that out, uh, I'm not going to go through that. You'll get the confirm order button. It'll take you then into the payment screen. Enter your payment information. And once you actually hit submit, um, your, your um, order will be processed in near real time. You will be presented. If you only ordered one or licensed one single G10, your G10 will show up on the screen. If you um, license more than one, you'll get them all in an email. You'll still get that single in an email. But what to expect afterwards is you'll receive an email from GS1 US, several of them, one with just your receipt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just I've, I've received um, uh, received payment. Um, you'll get a, an email with your actual GTIN. Um, and then you'll also get an email um, introducing you to Data Hub tool, login information, so that you can have access the tool to be able to start managing those GTINs. So it's pretty simple, um, yes. and that's the process. Yes, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And on the checkout, the total is actually saying 60, but I think it's because you had two. You were buying two GTINs, correct? Okay, 30. It costs $30 per um, GTIN that you get. And yeah. that was awesome. I've done a couple of demos. Sorry, I don't clear out my cart. <laughs> okay. um, but, okay, I have a few questions. Um, that I had myself and I believe some of our viewers might have it as well. So when you do complete that process, you're going to receive a number. Um, mm -hmm. is it going to be a 12 digit number? Is it going, or 13? Cause you said UPC, EAN, G, G, yes. So, um, because you're, if you're coming to GS1 US, um, we license out the 12 digit GTIN. So, um, in the, the US market, we've traditionally um, always issued the 12 digit GTIN or the UPC. Mm -hmm. Um, if for whatever reason you, re and these are globally unique, so your G10, your 12 digit could be used not just in the US market. It, it, it is a globally unique item. Okay. It technically can be used in a European market or elsewhere. But for some reason, sometimes you may need to be, to get an EAN, a 13 digit. Um, we don't offer that for our e-commerce um, offering. You do have to call our member support. We do issue EAN. Um, the 13 digit G10, but um, you'd have to call in for that. But yes, what you would get from GS1 US is that 12 digit G10. Okay. Um, so when which, you go on Amazon? Yes, I just you would select. Okay. Yeah, so when you go on Amazon, because we do confuse things and call it a G10, but when you go on Amazon, it says product identifier, and I think you have a drop down G10, EA, and UPC. We get that question a lot. Hey, I got my G10 from you, and it's not accepting it on the Amazon. Um, you have to select UPC. Okay, awesome. And you already started um, answering another of my questions, which is if you can sell it, if you can use that number anywhere else. But 
I know that you said that you can, but do you have to list it on Amazon or on a U.S. marketplace first or no? You can start off somewhere else. Okay. Now, the only thing that I am going to say, um, and this is, again, another whole module if you ever want to go into, okay. if you are selling your product in multiple regions, so you sell it in the U.S., but then you want to sell it in France, um, if your product packaging changes and you have to put language on it that is French, you actually do need to assign a different G10 to it because it is a different product in a way because it's presented differently to the consumer. So you could have a G10 for your U.S. product and then you have a G10 for your French product because it has different packaging. It does not have to if, be an EMN. If you have a different language, if you need to if, like change the language, okay. Yeah. But if you sell that same product and it's in English and it's the exact same package and you sell it in France, you don't need a different okay. identifier. It's when you change the packaging. Okay. And that that's awesome. And so it's my question. And going back to the price, because so many people were not buying with GS1 because they, boom, saw that huge bundle and the renewal fee and everything. Is there a bundle? Is there a bundle that does not include renewal fees? There are no bundles, so it's just, you know, you license that, that $30 G10 license as many of them as you want, and it is just a one-time fee. Right. Because you said that there was no limit. So, we, for example, for the 10-pack, you buy, you pay 250 for 10, and the renewal fee is $50. Does that $50 cover all of the 10 barcodes, or is it $50 per G10? It's just the renewal fee on that 10 capacity. Okay. Because my view, technically, um, if you buy, for example, 10 or 12 uh, of single G10s with no renewal fee, by the second or third year, you still save you money if you don't have to renew it. So anyways, go ahead and do your calculations and see what will be best for you. But I, I'm so excited about this, um, this update. Definitely think most people will now be safer and actually go directly to the source. And um, the next question is, you we are buying from just one U.S., but do you need to be a U.S. citizen or resident, or can you be from another country? No. So we don't have any limits on, um, you know, where you reside to, to license through the GS1 US site. The one thing I do always, you know, comment is, you know, it depends. You have to think about if you need to call into your local um, GS1 office to get support. Mm -hmm. If you are in Brazil and you come to GS1 US, you're not going to get Portuguese, um, help desk. Um, you're going to not going to get the in language. You, um, you know, we only offer, you know, support in US language and in US time. So you also have to think about your region. Um, and we may not know all of the, um, the, the nuances of your region mm -hmm. if you're in a different region. So that's the only thing I, um, I comment on is, you know, it's just regionality. That makes sense. And kudos to you for mentioning Portuguese. I don't know if you know this, but I'm Brazilian and oh, okay. a lot of people just assume we speak Spanish, which is so offensive. Just kidding. <laughs> But, um, okay, so that makes sense. So that's good. And do you, can you buy it as an individual or do you need, to, because you said you asked for the company name of, at checkout. So no, you but can, can you buy it as an yeah. individual? Yeah, you can buy it as an individual. Because we do see that with a lot of those small micro businesses. It's just that eight person starting up. Um, you know, there are some cases where if you are truly serious about launching your business, you may want to look into, you know, different types of business models instead of just being a single. But yeah, there are no limits. We don't, we don't limit that. And one thing I meant to ask before, actually, um, when I was comparing the, 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 the bundle that has the prefix with the single G10, is there any situation or any type of product that you cannot use the single G10? You need to have, oh, okay. What would be those situations? Um, medical devices. So okay. medical devices is absolutely, and we put it on our page too, okay. um, you absolutely need to use a prefix for it. That's it. Not food, uh, that's, not dangerous. Yeah, food. I mean, that's that's more of a regulatory. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay, and we, we state it very clearly on our, uh, on our site. If you um, are issuing or are trying to identify a medical device, um, absolutely, um, there are regulations um, that you need to use the prefix. Okay. And 
uh, talking about the brand name and the product description that you need to fill out. Are you able to edit those at any point? Is that the data hub access to site that you can manage? Is that where you'll be able to edit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you made a mistake or a spelling error or, um, you know, that is, you could go back into the data hub tool and then you could actually modify that information in the data hub tool. Awesome. And do you know, because we do know that Amazon checks GS1 database. To be honest, I don't know exactly what they check. If I'm brand registered, or actually when you're creating an Amazon listing, you have to put on the brand name as well of the product. Does that, does that need to match with the brand name that I'm um, using when I purchase the G10? Um, Amazon does not check to that level. So they don't go to the absolute level there. So um, Amazon's checks, they do use GS1 data. So they take the, the license data. So they make sure that the prefix matches the company. Um, so that the seller is truly, you know, matching, it, it matches the, the um, G10 to their prefix and the company name. Um, okay. They have their own scripts internally that checks brand registry. Um, I'm not as, you know, privy to, to tell all those types of things, but there is some, uh, some uh, brand registry checks that they do, but it is not against the brand name in the Data Hub tool. Because um, each, again, they take... Um, they look at all of the GS1 company prefix license data around the globe. So we have a database. Um, it's okay. called Gapier. You can find it online. Um, but they use that database um, and check against the, the identifiers that are issued from the various GS1 member organizations around the world to ensure that that seller is using a GS1 license prefix. Okay. And that is why a lot of people ask, does Amazon require me to purchase from GS1? They don't require, correct? They recommend, but they recommend it because they will be doing this verification and, and buying from GS1 websites the only way to ensure that you're getting an authentic barcode, correct? And that's when you, when you do license your identifiers through a GS1 member organization, whether it's US or any others, it goes into that database that they check. Okay. And do you know uh, what would be the risks of buying um, G10's UPCs from third-party sellers? Um, well, the first one is, is that those are not registered into the, the license database. So, um, And so not only does um, Amazon, but other marketplaces, other um, companies use that um, license registry, um, to do the, the validations to ensure, again, this is really around brand equity, um, protecting the sellers, um, ensuring that, you know, trying to reduce counterfeiting, um, lots of different use cases, but it's just trying to assure that that, that prefix, um, that identifier is associated to the company selling it so that you can trust that that, that is an authentic product from that seller. That makes sense. And I'm um, now with the single G10, I, I do believe that's it's, I mean, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. Definitely want to protect yourself. You don't want to risk, even if you're not selling on Amazon, if you're watching this and you're selling in a different marketplace or a sales channel or even a marketplace that does not require a G10 at all. Um, as I said, it's about like building that business and growing and, and making sure that you're protected. Um, okay. So we're almost done. Just a couple, couple more questions. One, do barcodes ever expire? Um, they do not. Um, the the renewal fee that we um, have, though, um, if you um, uh, do do a capacity based license capacity based prefix with us at GS1 US, and you do not pay your renewal fee, what happens is we report that prefix as inactive in the the global registry, and so um, companies will know that your prefix is inactive. Okay. Just a, a, but a, let's say I purchase a. a uh, like five single G10s. The only never, one to use now. Singles, Can, singles will never expire. Okay. As long as there's no renewal fee, it's good to go. Okay. And then the last question, uh, not two questions. One, do you know if Amazon checks existing listings? Let's say someone um, purchased from a third party seller. They don't even know if it's in the GS1 thing. Do you know if Amazon checks existing listings? Um, I, I'm not, I don't know. Um, okay. They have a lot of different programs going on right now and doing right. some, you know, yeah. what I've heard from an agent is that they do not, 
but nothing stops them from starting to do that. So in that case, do you know if it's possible for someone who um, is already selling maybe for years now a product that had a barcode not from GS1, can they switch keeping their same listing or do you know if this process is possible? Yeah, I think their seller support team has a process that allows for that um, that changing over of um, from a, a non-authorized G10 or non-GS1 issue G10 to a GS1 G10. Um, I think the seller support team has a process in place for that. Awesome. Um, it's great news. Great news. So I'm so excited about this. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time in um, clarifying this. I do think this is going to be very valuable for people, not only who are starting, but people who are starting to think very seriously about their business, business growth, equity, and all that. I really appreciate your time, Michelle. And where can people find more information about this? I do think you have a uh, GS1 US as a YouTube channel or yep. any contact. We have our um, our website, which I showed you, gs1us.org. We have that, and we'll have that in the description below. And GS1 US does have our own YouTube channel, which is a great place for companies to go. And we have um, all different types of, of um, information about different standards, too, and how it helps your business in little short videos. Um, oh. Because our standards can be very complicated, we try to break them down and make them a little bit more user-friendly yeah. through video. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified for future videos. And thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.